Hi, thank you. So, my name is Yuri Osha. I work for uh, Red Hat. I work uh, on Perf, and one of the latest things we actually did is that we moved some of the Perf functionality to the libperf. So, this is more of commercial presentation for you guys to start using the libperf. So, libperf, what is it? It's basically Another kernel tree library. So if you are familiar with libpf, libtrace event, and other libraries in the kernel tree, libperf is right there with them. What does it do? It's the interface uh, for the perf events subsystem. Uh, at the moment, uh, we took just the counting and sampling interface, uh, which I will be uh, discussing. Uh, later on, uh, but basically the, uh, the idea is to take any mature and stable code from the perf tool, which is basically most of it, and move it uh, to the uh, libperf. We will do all the things that library is supposed to do, so we will have version symbols, and we will have very nice uh, documentation that I will show you uh, shortly. So, as I said, currently we are in the, in the uh, Linux kernel tree, so you need to actually follow some steps to, we are, uh, so far we are not in the package, so you need to uh, follow some step to install the library, which I will just show you. So, assuming you are in the uh, kernel tree, uh, kernel git tree, uh, you just go, to the tools libperf, and this is where the libperf is residing, and to actually install it, it's very simple. You type make install, that's there where you were to install it. The magic will happen, and you will see everything, everything uh, under the desk there uh, directory. So we have the standard things that you would expect from library. We have some header files and we have, uh, we have some uh, libraries. So once you have this installed, you can start using it. What can we do at the moment? The interface is quite easy. And at the moment, we support counting and sampling which basically mean we allow you to create perf event, to attach it to anything we can attach it to, and get the value from the event. We can do that for the counting, so we can get just the number. We can do also sampling, that means uh, we will open ring buffer between kernel and user space, and you can read uh, the samples and do whatever you want with them. So, I will just uh, go like quickly uh, through both of the interfaces so you get the idea how, how simple that is. If you actually go to the installed tree, you can see we have very nice documentation, even the web uh, HTML file, so you can actually go to the, you can put it to the browser and you can read everything that is to know about the counting. I will just highlight some points, uh, how the counting works. So I will just go uh, quickly about the interface. Uh, the libperf, as any other library, uh, we have the initialization function, uh, which will do some basic setup and allows you to uh, provide the callback that will actually get any debug message uh, from the library itself. So anytime the library complains about something or do some debug, it will go through this uh, callback. So once you do this, you define the event. The event is basically defined in the same way when you want to create event uh, directly through the kernel. So we are using this uh, perf event attr function, which uh, you populate with the data of the event you want to create. For this example, I'm creating two events, software CPU clock and software task clock, and they are both created as disabled. Next step is to decide what are you going to measure, 
Uh, for this example, the example is measuring uh, the process itself, like it's measuring itself. Uh, again, we have object for that, so perf thread map, you create uh, the object like this and set up with uh, PID uh, that you are interested in zero is for the current process. Next steps is uh, basically common for any time that we access events in the perf. We are using this way of accessing events, meaning we have perf list object, uh, you create it, and then you populate it uh, with the events, and later on, you are doing, uh, uh, you are working only uh, with the perf event list. So create the event list, create the uh, event object uh, from the ATTRs that you defined, put it to the event list. Now you set the map, basically saying to event list what you want to monitor, and that's the perf thread map uh, object that we created earlier. We will monitor ourselves. This function will open the events, so at that point, uh, we basically have all the file descriptors uh, for all the events in the event list. And as I said, the events are created uh, disabled. You need to specifically enable and disable events and do something that you want to measure in between. So this is the counting interface, meaning that you create the events, you let them count something, and you want the number. The number uh, here is how you get the number. We have some uh, iteration functions which you can get every event through the uh, event list, and this perf fcl read will actually read the counter to you, and this structure counts will get you the value and the times uh, for the value. And you can print it, you can do uh, whatever you want to do with it. At the end, of course, we provide some cleanup functions uh, just to clean up. Uh, so this is the counting interface, really easy, great event. Measure something, get the values, you are done. The other interface that we currently have is sampling. It's a little more, uh, little more difficult, but not that much. Again, if you go to the install tree and check the HTML file, you will find very nice documentation. I encourage you to read everything. It's really nicely explained. So we are doing the sampling. There are some common steps. It's just different at the end. So again, you need to initialize the library, of course. Uh, when you define the events for this uh, example, it's basically doing the sampling for the hardware CPU cycle. So basically, this is the event when you use uh, perf record without any, uh, any parameters. It will, it will do basically this. It will define the hardware cycle and start sampling on this. Uh, you initialize it with some uh, black magic, which is explained in the, in the doc if you are interested. Uh, again, you need to decide what do you uh, want to monitor. Uh, for this uh, example, we will, sampling, we will do the sampling uh, system-wide, so we have special object for that, our CPU map, uh, which will, this way it will initialize to all the CPUs in the system. And now again, uh, the thing with the event, so we have the event list, with which we populate the event list with the events, and then play only with the event list. So this is how you create it. This is how we create uh, the event from the attribute that we defined above, you add it to the event list, you set the map, you tell the event list what to monitor, you open, and here is where it's different. This function perf ev list map basically creates the ring buffer. So you, you have some events in the, uh, in the event list, and when you call this function, it will create the ring buffer for every event and for every CPU or whatever object you uh, initialize the event list, and it will create the ring buffer for the sampling. So whenever the kernel generates the sample, it goes to the ring buffer, and that's how you do the sampling. So this is just to create the, uh, the maps, the ring buffers. The event is, again, created disabled, so you need to enable it and disable. This example sleeps for three seconds. 
the example is doing the sampling system-wide. So when it's actually sleeping for three seconds, the events are, uh, the sampling is working on every CPU and every CPU is getting the data to the ring buffers. So uh, normally you would like to, after you enable the, the event list with the event, you want to start read as, as fast as possible uh, because the ring buffer, the kernel will not wait for the ring buffer. And the way it works is that uh, the user space needs to read the data to make the space for the kernel to produce the data. So uh, you need to read as fast as possible. But for the sake of this example, I am just getting the three seconds of the data to the ring buffer. And this is how you read the ring buffer. Again, we have some iteration functions. And for uh, this will iterate through every ring buffer. And uh, this is the way how you read the data from the ring buffer. So there's some init function, some final function, and in between, you will get pointer to every event in the ring buffer. And when you have the pointer, you can process the event, which is at the moment somehow uh, black magic for those that you are not familiar with actually how the event is stored. This is another interface that we are planning. But at the moment, this is how you parse the output, and this is what you get out of the output, the CPU, PID, TID, IP, and period. Of course, this is all configurable, but you need to know how the things are stored in the buffer, and this is the way how to parse it uh, from the buffer. It will, uh, we will provide the interface for that uh, later on. And again, clean up, clean up, clean up at the end. So this is how you do uh, the sampling. Uh, the motivation for this interface to actually expose this interface uh, We've been asked for some time to ex uh, make some of the functions external, like put some of the functions to the, uh, to the library. And uh, the most of the time people ask for is uh, to be able to read the trace points, like to have the way to put uh, uh, some function calls to their own library to get the data from the trace points and uh, to to use it for debugging, basically, because you can define your own trace points and, and see uh, what's happening. So I put together an example which does exactly that. So it's basically the sampling, uh, and it's connected with a lib trace event, which takes the data from the trace point and display it uh, to the user. And I will show it to you. So when you download the example, you will basically, uh, okay. you will get makefile and the C file, which you can see it's not, not that big. It's just like 250 lines. Uh, the makefile only wants you to, uh, to put together uh, the kernel tree. And uh, uh, the directory is where you want to install the libperf and libtrace event. So when you put it uh, with your setup, you can say make lips, and it will make both lip trace event and lip perf for you. Uh, when you say make, it will make the TP binary for you. And you can basically use it like TP, scat, scat switch, which means you provide the subsystem name for the trace point. Every trace point goes with the subsystem name and the uh, event name itself. So you just put the subsystem name and the name of the event, and you will get the uh, values uh, from, the, from the trace point. If I put something less verbose, you will, yeah, you will basically, it hooks to the, uh, to the trace point, get the data, and print the data to the user. If you actually check the, check the file, it is actually what? Yeah, it's 200 and something lines, uh, 264. So it basically follows the example. It creates the trace point, 
the lib trace event needs some initialization, so uh, you, will, uh, you will actually tell the lib trace event that you want which uh, trace point you want to decode, and later on it's just uh, libperf, so the libperf in it, and the standard thing that you saw uh, in the example, and it ends up with uh, reading uh, the ring buffer uh, live and printing, printing out uh, the data. The display function for every trains point is the black magic again, a little more explained, but basically you need to know how the kernel stores the data to the sample, uh, so you can actually uh, parse it out and uh, and play it, uh, with the data. The lib trace event is actually used to get you the nice uh, line output uh, from the from the trace point. So this is like really a simple 260 line example to uh, to have. Uh, in the in the binary, like your own monitoring of the trace point. Quickly, just going through the future interface. So this is just the beginning to have something to work with. Uh, we will uh, add uh, the next item on the to-do list is to add the uh, API for parsing the perf data files. And because we've been asked from uh, from uh, the guys from other libraries like uh, Babel Trace. Uh, to have some access to the perf data when they want probably to merge the data with their own data. So this is what comes next. Uh, another interface we've been asked is to provide something that parse the events names and provides uh, the perf event ATTR structure defined with the data. So uh, to the perf tool, when you're using the perf tool, you can use really nice perf event names, like almost human readable names. And perf tool actually parses that and uh, put it to the structure that you can use with the kernel. So this is something really useful that would be in the library and everybody would be allowed uh, to do that. Then, of course, the sampling parsing and some hardware events counting. That's another items on the to-do list. On the to-do list is also uh, packaging. Uh, there are two options that we are considering now. It's either to go the way the libbpf went and had some external mirror on the GitHub, and the source would be still kernel, kernel tree, but once in a while we would, uh, we would uh, store the data to the GitHub and make package out of the GitHub source. This way we would be maintaining our own uh, release numbers. The other way is to uh, put another library to the kernels tools, uh, at least in Fedora. I'm uh, not sure how the other distribution maintain this, but in this way we would actually uh, be dependent on releases of the kernel. So we need to, we need to see if actually uh, one way or the other is, is better. And that's it. So if you have any questions. So, um you haven't initialized size field in struct perf uh, event author. Uh, is it initialized by the library, I presume? Yeah, if, if it's filled by zero, it's, it's the current one. Is it filled? No, it's you don't need by, to. Uh, it should be filled by struct perf event author size. And uh, the, the, my question was, well, what, what happens if uh, the applications and libraries' ideas of, well, what per struct perf event author size is different? Yeah, I think it will not work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the issue because, well, it actually have grown in 5.5 uh, mm -hmm. again, so, yeah. Well, you need to, uh, the, the ATTR structure is what you provide to the library. Yeah, so but you, you need to make sure it's right. the size field. And, and you what? have initialized for the syscall. So probably it's done in the library, I presume. Yeah, there's some initialization in the library. I'm not sure about the size call. I'm also not sure if uh, currently we provide the zero it will actually go ahead and try whatever's in the kernel and see if that matches the, the attribute. So that should work as well. Okay. Thank you. I have a question like, for example, if I want to measure some bottlenecks in application, like if I select LTTNG, which is much easier to set up and run and analyze, 
how could it be compared to perf? Is perf more precise in such situations or it couldn't be compared at all? Yeah, I guess it can, can be compared, but it's case by case. Uh, yeah, uh, the RDTNG is another word, right? So they do something uh, we don't, we do something they, they don't do, so it's case to case what, what are your needs. Okay. Any more questions? How stable is the API of this library? Stable. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, the, uh, the interface that we uh, just ported to the library is one of the oldest uh, thing in the perf. And the shape it has now has for maybe several years now. So we are quite confident we will not. Uh, the perf itself is using this interface. The perf itself is using this library. So there's some guarantee that it will not change. However, uh, the, the library itself uh, have the version symbols. So uh, Is it? Yes, we have support Great. for version symbols. So once we release the library, we actually um, we will care about the API stability through the version symbols. So. Yeah, thanks. Does the library only use the public um, Linux ABI? Or I see it's in the same Git repository. Does it mean it use uh, the same API as any other application? Or is there some? Well, it's built for Linux. It's written for Linux, if that's your question. Or maybe I misunderstood. Um, like, uh, Linux has uh, ABI stability. It will not break things. So. Uh, it, um, so libperf use only this API to access uh, Linux, or is there some? No, no, no. Uh, the library uh, using the the syscalls that are provided by the kernel. So it's it's simple as that. It's just the user space user space glue that you can uh, easy, uh, easy easily access and make those examples that I show. Thanks. We have time for. One or two questions? So how do you think the experiment of maintaining user space code in the kernel is working? You kind of touched on this, but like, uh, I guess a recent one is like lib u ring is actually maintained outside the kernel tree, right? Um, but you know, obviously it has a large kernel component. I'm just curious, like, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic, and now that you're, you're, I guess, proposing to add more, I'm just curious how you think it's going or uh, so maintaining the user space inside the kernel tree, is that your question? Yeah. How? Uh, it's actually not that bad because the kernel people don't care too much. So, and the maintainer is quite permissive, so. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he didn't even know it got merged recently, so. <laughs> so it's quite, uh, yeah, it doesn't have, there's a group of people which will give you always feedback, the group of people which is interested in that. Uh, but like the core kernel community, uh, like for example, Linus himself, uh, I, I saw some email, he doesn't care that much what goes inside, as long as it's not total crap. <laughs> so, not that bad. Okay, thanks. I'll be sending patches to add system D. Okay, we're almost out of time. So if you have some more questions for your car, I suggest that you meet him in the hall. And thank you. Thank you.